Next, we have something like a concept called dominant force. Okay. So, dominant force, in order to understand, um, let us consider a sample transfer function, let's say C of S by R of S is equal to, say, some K divided by S into S plus 2, S plus, say, 2.5, and let's say S plus 100. Okay. Now, in order to understand dominant force, first let us draw whole zero plot. So what do we have? Uh, we have poles at 0, comma, minus 2, comma, minus 2.5, and at 100. So let us uh, place these poles in the complex S plane. All poles are found on the LHS of the S plane. So you have a pole at origin, then at minus 2, then at minus 2.5, and let's say you have a pole at minus 100. Now, how many roots or how many poles do you have? You have one, two, three, four poles. So you have a total of four poles. And all four poles are located on the LHS of the S plane. So that means to say the system is stable. Now, if you try to investigate uh, the effect of each pole on settling time, um, you will be able to understand that the poles which are uh, located far away from the imaginary axis will take lesser settling time. On the other hand, the poles which are very closer to the imaginary axis uh, are going to take uh, uh, more uh, settling time, right? Because you have already understood the concept of relative stability. Okay. Now, just to you know recall, the settling time T s is given as 4 by zeta omega n. So zeta omega n is nothing but real part of poles. Okay. If you have complex conjugate poles, you are supposed to take only the real part of complex conjugate poles. On the other hand, in our explanation, we have considered the real roots. So you are supposed to take only the real part of it, all right? So you can say that your settling time increases with the decrement in zeta omega n value. That means to say, if zeta omega n value is very small, then the system will take larger time to settle down or the system will take larger settling time. So the roots which are located far away from imaginary axis, okay, basically takes lesser settling time. All right, the roots which are located far away from the imaginary axis takes lesser settling time. That's because Greater the value of zeta omega n, lesser will be the settling time. Okay. So that's the reason these roots are also called as um, insignificant roots or insignificant poles. Okay. You can also call it as less. dominant. On the other hand, the roots which are closer to the imaginary axis are going to affect the settling time. In the sense, it makes the system to, uh, it, it makes the system sluggish basically. It takes longer time to settle down. That's the reason the roots which are found closer to imaginary axis takes or you know, 
yeah, takes larger settling time. Hence, the transient response is greatly affected by these roots. That is the reason these roots or poles are also called as dominant poles. Okay. So, what are dominant poles? Dominant poles are poles of the closed loop system which are very close to the imaginary axis. Okay. On the other hand, non-dominant poles or less dominant poles or insignificant poles are the poles of the closed loop transfer function which are found far away from the imaginary axis. So that's the concept of dominant poles. Hope you understood the uh, meaning of dominant poles. Thank you.